Welcome to Module 4, Lecture 3 in Microbiological Risk Assessment. And in this lecture I will talk about hazard characterization and risk characterization. And the material I will use is developed together with my colleague Martin Alter. After this lecture you will be able to describe the dose-response relationship used in microbiological risk assessment. You will be able to list factors that has an effect of the dose-response relationship. You will be able to explain how the exposure is transformed to the probability of disease and you can describe how you can compare the effect of different control measures on the risk for the consumer. If we look at this slide again, we are now moving to the hazard characterization which I also in brackets here mentioned the dose response. Uh, and this is the slide we have from the first lecture and now we are focusing on the consumer. So we have estimated and predict the exposure for the consumer and focus will now be on how does the pathogen cause disease in the consumer. This is a graph illustrating the relationship between exposure, which means the dose, and the probability of the disease, the response. Um, the graph has on the vertical axis the probability for ranging from 0 to 1 and on the horizontal axis the exposure what we have estimated in exposure assessment. The shape of this graph is based on typically epidemiological data, data we have from different outbreak situations with the pathogen. And when we have the data, we can estimate models describing this relationship. It's typically very heavy mathematics and it's nothing that we usually spend time on in microbiological risk assessment, but we go out and see what we can find in the literature and then we implement that knowledge into the uh, risk assessment. Uh, what you need to know at this level is that we have some assumptions in the dose-response relationship. One of the assumptions is that you can get sick of one pathogen. The probability is extremely low, but it's still there. And also that we have used the binomial dose-response model. If we do that, then we get this shape here like this. So an increased exposure will increase the probability of becoming sick after, uh, after exposure. The dose-response relationship, uh, dose relationship depends on both the pathogen, the host susceptibility and the food item. Here I have an illustration, the same as before, with the probability on the vertical axis and the dose or the exposure on the horizontal axis. And we now have three dose-response curves. Um, we have three different levels and you can look at this as if you are exposed to 100 CFUs for this dose-response curve, the probability is very low and this could be uh, a pathogen like Salmonella. If you are exposed to 100 Campylobacter, the probability of disease is much higher. And if you are exposed to 100 parasites like Cryptosporidium, you get a really high probability of uh, developing uh, the disease. So a pathogen, the, the infectivity of the pathogen has a strong influence. Uh, but also the host susceptibility. If we now look at this picture and think that we have the same pathogen, but we now have different hosts, um, then we can have the curve out here can represent young, healthy, strong people with a high immune, uh, uh, strong immune system, whereas the curve down here can represent very susceptible people like old people or sick, chronic sick people, whereas the middle group can represent average age uh, people or something like that. So the host susceptibility also varies. And then finally we have the food item. So it's, imagine now that you have the same pathogen and the same host. So then the food item that carrying the pathogen from the mouth to the intestine, so to say, which means that they have to pass the gastric acid, can have an influence. And we know from, exp exp uh, from experience that fatty food has a very protective effect for the pathogen and gastric acid. So if you have fat food, then maybe the dose-response relationship is down here, Whereas if you have less fat food, you move the curve upward, so it has a less, less uh, infective situation. Now we move to the final thing, the risk characterization. 
because the overall aim with microbiological risk assessment is to estimate the risk for the consumer of developing uh, a diverse effect. And this is the final step uh, uh, in the risk assessment. And what we're going to do now is to integrate the exposure, which is the amount of CFUs that the consumer is exposed to, with the dose-response relationship. How does the consumer respond on the exposure? Here we have an illustration where we have the exposure assessment on the left side, where we predict the number of CFUs at time of consumption, and we have the hazard characterization at the right side, where we have the how the consumer responds on the probability of the disease depending on the exposure, the amount of CFUs. And what we do in risk characterization is that we take the exposure, put it in here on the horizontal axis, and then we can read out on the vertical axis the probability that this exposure will cause an adverse effect. And if the exposure increases, we can say that the probability of an adverse effect increase. And in this case, you can read out the probability of the disease to 18%. This is to show how you can estimate the risk in an alternative scenario. If we now imagine that we in implement a control measure at the primary production, very early in the production line, we're lowering the concentration. And then we have a model a mathematical model for the exposure assessment describing what's going on with the pathogen along the production line. And the predicted amount of CFUs will now be lower. And then we take the new exposure, we use the same dose-response relationship as before, but then we put in the new exposure that in this case is lower, and then we read out a lower probability, and in this case it will be 5%. So this is how we integrate exposure assessment and dose-response relationship and estimated the risk. How to estimate the relative effect then? Then you use the same model, just as we did before, under alternative scenarios representing potential control measures. And then you estimated the baseline model, the number of cases or the probability. Um, and then you have the alternative scenarios where you have the alternative number of cases or alternative number of probabilities and then you divide these two values. So for instance by decreasing the prevalence of infected pigs in the primary production by 50% the risk for the consumer will de decrease to one-tenth compared to the current situation. And what we have done in this example here is that we use the same model, we just reduce the, the prevalence of infected pigs run through the model and then we get a new estimate of the risk for the consumer and we compare that with the current situation. In our example we had before we have 5% and 18%. 18% represent the current situation and 5% was the alternative scenario and it means that we have one-third of the current risk if we are able to reduce uh, the, the prevalence in the primary production. So again, I will end here by summarizing uh, the elements in risk assessment. First of all, you have the hazard identification, where you identify the hazard you're going to work with, the microbe, the hazard that caused adverse effect in the consumer. When you know that, you, you build an exposure assessment model where you try to describe what's going on in the production line from where the pathogen entered the food item until in a time of consumption. And there you can describe it by qualitative methods or quantitative methods. And then you work with the hazard characterization, how the consumer responds to the exposure. And I show the example where we use the quantitative approach. And then you integrate the exposure with how they respond to estimate the risk and that's what it is about, to estimate the risk for the consumer uh, given different situations in uh, how we control the, f uh, the pathogen in the food. This was the last uh, slide on this lecture. Thank you for watching.